Good afternoon and welcome to this press conference from the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos 2016. We're joined uh, on this panel today by, uh, uh, by the Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Löfven to my immediate left and uh, by Minister of Just Justice and uh, Migration of Sweden, Morgan Johansson. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, Minister, without further ado, over to you. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Um, first, let me say I, I think it's very important to be here, uh, World Economic Forum in Davos, because it's, it's a venue where representatives from different parts of society, the business community, civil society, and politics can meet and discuss uh, not least the issue that I'm focusing on uh, all the time, uh, how do we create more jobs and how can we increase growth? And I believe that um, uh, we need more cooperation between these parts of the community in order to achieve results. Several trade unions are also here in Davos uh, and I have attended a seminar discussing how we can support greater dialogue in the labor market and in the society between the social partners but also between the social partners and politics, because we, we want to both improve working conditions, but also increase productivity in, in our labor market and in the economy. The uh, main theme this year is the fourth industrial revolution. And um, at the informal gathering of world leaders uh, later this afternoon, I will highlight the importance of both uh, new industrialization and readjustment of the labor market, uh, doing this in an uh, increasingly digitalized world. But I am also convinced that the answer to this new reality is not to compete with lower wages, decreasing working conditions, but with knowledge and technology. There is no sense at all making people poorer. In addition to, to the growth-oriented issues uh, discussed here in Davos this year, refugee crisis is, of course, in the spotlight. Yesterday, I spoke at a public seminar on uh, the, the theme from migration to integration with the message that jobs and education are, of course, crucial to succeed in this. Uh, the major challenges that we face now can only be turned into opportunities if we face them together and if everyone, uh, all the member states, for example, in the European Union, take its responsibility. And uh, shared responsibility has, uh, of natural reason, been my key message this autumn when it comes to the refugee crisis. It is obvious to me that the global community uh, as a whole, but also Europe, needs to come together and handle this crisis. Uh, it can be, uh, cannot be that the responsibility lies uh, in just a few countries. Sweden is by far, if you count per capita, the country, the European country, that receives the largest number of, of refugees. But the last fall, we found ourselves uh, in a situation where it was unsustainable, and we had to take action to reduce the number of as asylum uh, applications. And now we are, of course, uh, struggling with uh, uh, major tasks uh, seen from three different perspectives. We need to globally prevent people from being forced to, to become refugees. And doing so, we need to focus on ending conflicts and fighting the root uh, causes uh, of involuntary migration. The second perspective is that we need to improve and reform the European refugee policy towards a system that shares the responsibility for receiving refugees more even throughout Europe. And the last perspective is, of course, that we need to make sure that the asylum seekers who have come to our country and who have the right to stay in Sweden can find a job and feel at home in our society. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Over to you, Minister. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, of course, it's also very interesting for me as, as Minister of Justice and Migration to be here these days. 
uh, to be able to follow the, the discussions and, and also the seminars. This year, uh, migration is one of the main topics of this meeting. And as the Prime Minister said, uh, Sweden is the country in Europe that received most asylum seekers per capita last, last year by far. Uh, last year we had 160,000 people applying for asylum in Sweden. And that is not only the highest number ever, uh, it is uh, also the highest number per capita by far in Europe. And it's also double as much as the previous record, which was in 1992, when we, after the ba Balkan War, uh, received 80,000 asylum seekers. So now 2015, 160,000. Mostly, of course, from Syria, from Afghanistan, and also from Iraq. Now we are in, in Sweden focusing on to give these people a good start in, in Sweden, building houses, uh, investing in education, both for the, for the children and for the adults, and opening up our labor market for all these people who are now, now uh, co has come to Sweden. Fortunately, I can say that the Swedish economy is, is doing quite well right now. We have a growth rate at almost 4%. Uh, we have decreasing unemployment, mm -hmm. and of, of course that gives us right now a, a quite good uh, conditions to, to be able to integrate these people. But uh, So I'm, I'm quite sure that we will be able to manage the, the task. However, as the Prime Minister says, said, we cannot keep on receiving so, so many people. There is a limit for us too. Therefore, we've had to take those measures to bring down the numbers this year. And we think that now other European countries must do their share. Europe, as a continent, cannot hide from the world when we see humanitarian crisis going on globally. Then we have to, to, be, uh, to do what we can to help. Uh, solidarity is, a core of, uh, is in, in the core of the European values. And I think that we must stress that we must, as Europeans, face this challenge as a union and not as individual mem member states. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Johansson. Um, we will now open the floor for questions. If you could uh, give me a sign of hand so I get a sense of where we... We have two gentlemen in the front row here. If you could state your name and organization for the sake of our online audience as well. Thank you. Uh, Kim Helmgard from USA Today. Prime Minister, can you tell us how confident you are that um, EU countries will be taking this shared responsibility for the refugees that everyone seems to talk about? Well, so far uh, that has been the problem, so I, I'm not naive. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, when we discuss this, my argument towards the countries that say they, they do not want to receive refugees is that if we cannot handle this as a European Union, the European Union in itself is at risk. We need to handle it. it. It is a European issue. We're a continent of 500 million more uh, people. Of course, we can handle it together. But if we cannot do that, uh, what we see now risking the Schengen uh, and other risks, uh, well, EU will be weakened dramatically. So I think that, for me, it's one of the strongest arguments that we need to take uh, this responsibility, uh, responsibility together. Although I'm not naive, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But that is the way to go. Yes. The gentleman. Hello, I'm Wouter van Noord. I'm with the NRC from the Netherlands. Um, I have a question for the Prime Minister as well. Uh, especially uh, after the remarks by uh, Wolfgang Schäuble earlier today about uh, an investment program for uh, the countries of origin. I wonder what your view is on such a plan. Yes, we, uh, we, we need to work on with all the three perspectives that I mentioned. We need, of course, to, to the European Union as a whole uh, to cooperate with uh, Syria and the countries surrounding, not only, and then Turkey, we're trying to cooperate with Turkey, but also Lebanon, Jordan. Uh, because, of course, uh, in the first place, it's, it's, it's better if people don't have to make this difficult and, and, and dangerous journey if we can support that. But of, at the same time, we know that will not um, end up a result in, in zero refugees. That won't happen. So we'll still have refugees, of course, coming to, to Europe. And that, so it still takes a, a common responsibility, a common solution. We need to find a, a new solution. But 
But yes, it's important uh, to, to cooperate financially also with, with the countries, yes. Thank you. Um, yes, hi, Gunilla von Halsvenska Dagblad. I have three questions. Uh, the first one is when uh, Sweden introduced the ID controls recently, uh, there were talks about that this would lead to a domino effect in Europe, and this is exactly what has happened. We see in Denmark, we see now Austria, we have seen Germany also making signs. Do you recognize that you have a responsibility in this domino effect actually happening, and where is it leading to? My second question is, are you disappointed that the talk about hot spots in Europe to deal with the refugees is an idea that is not, or a promise, that is not being realized? And my third question is, do you think the perception of Sweden as a socially and morally responsible country towards refugees is now changing? Thank you. Thank you. So a question about the domino effect, uh, the promise. Uh, I can also ask the, the, the minister to, to uh, answer, but, but I, I, let me begin. Now, it's odd, uh, Sweden, as the, the minister just said, we've taken by far the largest number of asylum seekers, and all of a sudden we are uh, accused of not showing responsibility. The, the, the mistake here is, the fault is, that other countries did not take their responsibility, and that is why we end up in this situation. Uh, we need to take the, we have taken the, the measures that are necessary, and, uh, and uh, to answer your third question, uh, combined with that is, I, do, I cannot see anyone that, can, uh, that cannot acknowledge Sweden's, Sweden's ambitions, the responsibility we have taken for, for refugees. Uh, and to be honest, I haven't met anyone uh, uh, of the European leaders who said, how can you do this? Uh, on the contrary, uh, we are uh, commended all the time for what we've done. So uh, I think that is important to say. Uh, when, uh, when it comes to, to hotspots, um, uh, if, uh, sorry, can you put a Yeah, 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 I know what. It, yeah. Yes, no, no. That of course we're disappointed. It should it, much more should have happened much earlier, and that is something that we have also discussed in, in the in the council. Of course, uh, that we are disappointed, and we raise the issue all the time. What what is happening? There are, uh, I believe, and that perhaps the minister knows better. There are two or three that are uh, functioning, working right now, but but far from from the number that we wanted to work. But please, minister. Yes, first on, on the domino effect, of, of course, I mean, uh, the border controls in Germany, they were put, they were, the, they were established long before. Uh, the only thing that has happened is that we have border controls in, in Denmark now, but Denmark, b the, the border between Germany and, and Denmark, but Denmark doesn't, uh, th that doesn't mean that they say no to any asylum seekers. On the contrary, I mean, if people come to, to Denmark, they will apply for asylum there. Uh, so, I mean, the concept of this domino effect that should be that should be released by Sweden, I think that's uh, the argument is quite weak. On the on the other side, as, I, as, uh, as the prime minister said, uh, well, I meet a very large understanding with my among my colleagues because they know what we have done. We have done more than any other country, and we've been done more than Sweden has done since the Second World War uh, in in in. Uh, in uh, matters of, of uh, taking care of people fleeing from, from war. Just the, cap just the last four months, September, October, November, December, there arrived 114,000 people to, to Sweden, 26,000 unaccompanied children. That's 1,000 school classes arriving to Sweden in four months. And of course, when you see that, you then you understand that uh, this cannot go on. You have to do things. You have to take focus now on taking care of the people who have, have come, and you cannot do that at the same time if you still have a pace of seven, eight, nine thousand people coming in. Then other countries must do their share. And um, uh, that is, th that's what, what we have to, to have a system for, so that other countries are doing that. I think it is, in, in a way, a tragedy that uh, we know that Europe as a continent could easily handle this task. For a million, for instance, or a million and a half, or two million a year to, to, to Europe. 
We are a continent of 500 million people. We could easily handle this task if we cooperated, uh, if we met this as a union and not as individual member states. Mm -hmm. and that is what we have to, what Sweden has been pushing for from the, from the start, and we will continue to do that. But now we also must focus on solving this very, very large task that we have, getting 160,000 people, uh, houses to live in, uh, jobs, uh, education, and that is a very, very large task for us. Thank you. Let's get the last two questions from Alexandra and Noah, please. Okay. Alexandra Fudel Schmidt from the Austrian Daily The Standard. Uh, Aust the Austrian government yesterday announced a quota system the, to reduce the number of asylum seekers. Do you have similar plans for Sweden? No, no you, you, please. Well, if, if I understand your question right, where is the. Ah, there. No. <laughs> Uh, you're talking about uh, having a kind of ceiling for how many. No, we, are not, we have not discussed uh, uh, that kind of, of uh, solution. There is a problem with that, and that is what do you do when you have reached the ceiling? What are we going to do then? I mean, we are all as nations bound by the, by the Geneva Conventions uh, and uh, saying that if there are people coming to our country and applying for asylum, <coughs> then we should try their application. So. It's not uh, not very easy to to go down that path. Sorry. <laughs> of course, I agree. <laughs> now uh, that has been my argument all the time because I've I've had this question so many times: How many refugees can Sweden take? Mm -hmm. And uh, exactly the same argument as the minister said. Uh, but I'm not sure really. Uh, Austria. I hear also the someone talking about it as guidelines. Uh, so so I'm, I'm not really sure what it means in detail. But we have taken our measures now, and uh, now let's see how they work. And, and uh, but the, it, it is it was important for us to to take some decisions in order to to decrease the number of asylum seekers. Thank you. I'm Svenning Dalga from Danish Television. Uh, there's been quite some uh, misunderstandings between Denmark and Sweden apparently in the last few months. What do you expect from the Danish government at the moment? And do you think that the Danish government is doing enough to cooperate you? And can I finally ask you, uh, what is the consequences of the strained attitude been between those two countries uh, who uh, used to be very close to each other? Well, first, uh, I wouldn't exaggerate. Uh, we're in the same uh, in a similar position, uh, I have a very good relationship with the with the Danish Prime Minister. We we phone one another, we uh, send text messages, and we of course we meet in the European Council. So um, uh, I wouldn't exaggerate that there's a, a huge problem between our countries. And now, uh, what I I'm not going to say what I expect from the Danish government. Only what we need, what we are expected to do together. We have a, s a problem to solve. And one of the perspectives that we are advocating is, of course, once again, this is a EU 28 member states uh, issue. So, uh, but then again, more concrete uh, in our uh, measures be between our countries, uh, I think the minister is better. Well, uh, and I have the exactly the same the same uh, uh, feeling about about this as the prime minister. I mean, we have very close con connections to the to the Danish uh, government. Uh, actually, we had contact yesterday with Inga, Inga Stoiber, and I'm going to, to Copenhagen on uh, February the 2nd to discuss more about our, our relations and how we can uh, improve uh, the uh, integration again in the, in the Osun, the Copenhagen, the Skåne region. Mm. Uh, because, of course, we've seen uh, the difficulties uh, there. It wasn't that, th there wasn't a chaos where th that some, some people said there was going to be chaos on Kastrup when we introduced the ID controls. On the contrary, it has gone quite smooth. And that's much thanks to mm -hmm. actually the Danish mm -hmm. uh, railroad company, DSB, that has, right. I think, worked very constructively together with, yeah. with us on the, th on the Swedish side to solve all the practical issues uh, during the, the, the Christmas and the New Year's uh, mm. uh, uh, period of uh, when we had to introduce when we introduced them, so we have close connection. We have a dialogue all the time, and I feel quite comfortable that we will keep on having that. Hi, Noah Barkin from Reuters, uh, Prime Minister. How much time do you think Europe has to get a grip on this crisis? The 
Dutch Prime Minister mentioned in a panel earlier this or earlier today that uh, he thought Europe had six to eight weeks to, to, to get a grip, and, and I assume that means getting countries who are now refusing to take on refugees to, to, to agree to do that. Um, so first of all, a question on the timing. Second of all, what pressure can be brought to bear, if any, on those EU countries that uh, are refusing to, uh, to take quotas of refugees? Thank you. Well, first time, yeah, I think uh, it is around that, in that ballpark, as you said, six to eight weeks. Uh, we uh, know that probably when spring comes, uh, we will, the, the number of refugees will, will increase again. And uh, the prediction from the UNHCR was quite dramatic, what we heard, I believe, last week or the week before. So we, we have to, to follow this very closely, and that is also why, why it's so important to, to keep on the, the uh, cooperation with Turkey uh, and other countries, of course, Lebanon and Jordan as, as well. Um, so, so we have to work very uh, intensely with, with that. Uh, measures for countries, well, it's, it's too, too easy to say. I think we need to first now make, make sure that we the Dublin Treaty is, is respected, uh, but also at the same time start the discussion on what would the future uh, system be? How can we really make this work? Uh, I know the countries that uh, are rejecting uh, quota, for example, uh, they are referring to their uh, integrity, uh, independent, that they themselves need to make these decisions. And I can respect that argument, uh, but at the same time, we need to find a, a solution uh, where everybody takes the responsibility. And then the, ar the question is, how do you balance that? The, the single countries, uh, the individual countries, integrity and decision making on one hand. On the other hand, we need to, to have this shared responsibility. So I think it's more important to, to put resources and, and time on discussing that solutions. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you, Minister Jonsson. I'm afraid we have to close the press conference at this point, uh, as we're already running over. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for joining. And uh, thank you for to the two of you. Thank you. Thanks. Ah. Yes, yes. I have a.